Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. In this tutorial, we'll be going over how to set up zombie spawners and zones. So the first thing I want to go over is the actual AI spawner. Every time you create a new map in Radiant, you're automatically given this actor right here. If you go ahead and select it, you will see at the top in your entity info window that this is actor, spawner, ZM, factory, zombie. This is where all of your zombies originate from. The first thing we're going to want to do is actually change the class of this zombie. Factory zombies are old and do not work with every single traversal. So we're going to change that. To do that, go to the top of your entity info window and click on remap class. This window will pop up with all of the target classes that you can spawn in. For now, we're going to just type in the filter of user map and we're going to be using this actor spawner. So go ahead and select it and then click remap. Now this AI is ready to be used with traversals. A quick thing to note, if you download any of the zombie packs from DevRaw, this is already done for you and you don't need to remap the class. If you ever wanted to create another one, instead of typing in these KVPs, all you can do is just copy and paste your selected actor and then just remap the class to which zombie you want. So for instance, I have the charred zombie from DevRaw. We could select it and it will change. Obviously the model didn't change. All you have to do is modify the model. So I just control C, delete this and control V. And now you can see our model has changed. So now in game, both of these zombie types will spawn. And you can have as many of these as you like. Next, let's go over the actual zombie spawn locations. We have four, we have risers, instant spawners, window barriers, and traversals. The first one we'll go over are the risers. These are given to you by default whenever you make a new map in Radiant. All it is is a script struct, so you can create these by yourself if you want, or just copy and paste what's given to you, and then just change up the KVPs. So what's important to note is the target name. The target name of your struct has to be the target of the zone, which we will cover later in this video, to dictate which zombies spawn when a zone is activated. So for instance, the target name for this struct is start zone spawners. If we take a look at our info volume for the spawn location, the target is start zone spawners. So this starting zone is targeting everything named start zone spawners. Again, this will tell the game which zombies to spawn and where. If you ever have issues with zombies spawning in zones that aren't active yet, make sure the target of your info volumes are correct and the target names of your zombie structs are also correct. We'll be going over zones more in a little bit, but I wanted to quickly explain what the target name of a zombie struct spawner is. Back at our riser location, if you look at the script noteworthy, this dictates whether or not it's a riser location or not. We're going to keep it as a riser location and our script string is find flesh. What this does is tell the zombie to look for players when they spawn in. So riser locations are our default spawners. These will spawn zombies that crawl out of the ground and make an effects and play a sound. Next we'll go over instant spawners. They are set up the exact same way, except the only thing we're changing in the KVPs is the script noteworthy. We're going to change it from riser location to spawn location. Instead of playing an animation where the zombies comes out of the ground, they will instantly spawn and start heading towards the player. Next, let's go over window barrier spawners. By default, you will have one already, which is the one I have in front of me here. So we'll be looking at the KVPs and I will explain how to set up other ones as well. So first thing, let's look at our struct. Again, the target name is from our zone. Our script noteworthy is riser location. And the only thing we're changing here is the script string. You can see here that the script string, the value is receiver set entry A. That is because if we were to select our prefab for the window barrier, we have a script string of receiver set entry A. This means this struct, any zombies that spawn here will only go to the defined window barrier. If we were to make another one, we would have to change the script string from A to B for our window prefab, as well as for our spawner. And you can create as many as you like. Just be sure to keep track of your script strings 
for your structs and window prefabs. And lastly, let's go over traversals. So if we look first at our struct, it is the exact same as our riser location. And you could change this to either riser or spawn location. So say this spawn is outside of your map and you want them to come through without a window barrier. What you can do is place down a traversal. The traversal will always have three things, a green box, a red box, and traversal brushes. Traversal brushes will not appear in game and they're only here to give you a reference of how the animation will look in game. If you want a deeper look into how the animation is for a traversal, you can enter their prefab by right clicking, go into prefab, enter prefab. And now that we're here, if we were to select the first green cube, you can see a little zombie pops up. If we were to then right click at the top and click on the animation window, we could press play and it would play the animation the zombie would do in game. So if we went to our game view, press play again, you could see what it will look like. So traversals aren't given to us by default. In the description, there will be a link to a download where you can get a whole bunch of traversals that you could use in your maps. And that's pretty much it for spawners. Next, let's go over zones. So here in our map, we will not see our info volume. If you click F on your keyboard to bring up the filters and tick info volumes, we will now see this volume brush. If we select it and then press N to bring up entity info, we can see the target name is the name of our first zone, which is start zone, a script noteworthy, which is the player volume, which tells the game that this is a playable space. And as we explained before, the target is which spawners that will spawn in that zone. Before we continue, I highly recommend downloading this pack from DevRaw, which will give you different colored volume textures that's great for organization. When creating zones, we only want it to be in the playable space, because if you're in a zone and a zombie dies within a zone, it means a power up can drop. So behind window barriers or traversals or anywhere that the player cannot get to, you do not want a zone there. It's also worth noting that anytime a player leaves a zone and it is not active or they just leave the map entirely, they will instantly die. So what I just did was make the starting zone only the area that I want to be the starting area. We have here two debris that I would like to have different zones for different spawners, so we're going to set that up now. We're going to grab our zone and duplicate it and place it accordingly. This is for the green zone, so I'm going to make this volume texture green. Next, we're going to bring up the entity info, and you can see that our target is disappeared. Whenever you duplicate entities with a target attached to it, it has a chance of deleting. So the first thing we're going to do is change the target name to zone two. And next we're gonna add our target back, but instead of targeting the start zones, we're gonna do the second zone spawners. So this will be zone two spawners. As you can see, it is bugging out right here. That is because we haven't set up our spawners yet. Let's duplicate our zone and do the same thing for zone three. A quick thing to note, make sure your zones are all touching just in case a player gets through and they don't die due to not touching a zone. Now that we have our zone set up, let's change our spawners. So here we have our zone two spawner. We're just gonna change the target name from start zone spawners to zone two spawners. And now that we could see the red line is connecting to our green zone. Let's do the same thing for the blue zone. So here we have it, our start zone has the target name of start underscore zone and it is targeting start zone spawners. All of our spawners in our starting zone have the target name of start zone spawners. And we have done the exact same for zone two, our green zone and zone three, our blue zone. Now initially only the starting zone will be initialized. So let's go over how to activate zones through debris. So here I have my debris set up and from a previous tutorial we have set up on our trigger a script flag. This script flag will be used in GSC script to let the game know when to activate the next zone. So here on the trigger, I have the script flag set to activate zone two, and this will activate the second zone. I also have this set up for the blue zone to activate zone three, and I've done something a little different for this middle debris connecting zones two and three together. 
So for this one debris, I actually have two triggers, one for each side, and they are going to have different script flags depending on which side is activated. So for the green zone going into the blue zone, if we select the trigger, we're going to want the script flag to be activate zone 3. However, when we're in the blue zone and we want to get to the green zone, if we select our trigger, we're going to change our script flag to activate zone 2. This is how you would link multiple zones together without going through the original source. And that is pretty much it for zones and spawners, but we are going to have to do a little bit of scripting to finish and complete our zones. Let's go ahead and do that now. So with the map finished, we are going to control S to save and close out of Radiant. In the launcher with our map selector, we're going to right click and open the map folder. Next, we're going to open up scripts, ZM, and here we're going to see our name and it's going to be the GSC file. We're going to open this up in a text editor. So here we have our script loaded. We're going to scroll down until we see user map test zone in it. In the description below, I will have an example line of code that we are going to paste into this exact function. So after this level flag set, we're going to press enter to create new lines. And then we're going to paste in the code I have in the description. So this is pretty simple to understand. We're calling the zone manager script to add an adjacent zone. And we have three arguments here. Our first argument is the first zone we'll be in. And the second argument is the zone we're going to. And the third argument is the script flag that we placed on our debris trigger. So for our first zone, we have start underscore zone. And our second zone is zone underscore two. This is saying the start zone is our first zone and we're going to zone two. Now in order to activate it, we're going to type in activate zone two. Exactly how we have set up in our debris. Since we have zone two and zone three, I'm going to copy this line and paste it underneath. Again, start zone is our first zone except this time we're going to zone three and we're activating zone three. So now we have that set up for the start zone. However, we also have zone two going to zone three and zone three going to zone two. So let's create these lines now. Again, we're just going to paste in our line and our first zone will be zone two and we're going to zone three, which will activate zone three. We can take this line Copy it and paste it in. And this time we're going from zone three to zone two and activating zone two. It might seem a little complicated. It will take some time to learn, but this is how you set up zones in your script. This is the last step. We can go ahead and control S to save our file. We can close out of here. We can close our map folder. And now all we have to do is compile and link and test our map. Okay, so here we are with our game loaded up. If we come over here, we will see our zombies spawning in whenever they do. So here we could see these zombies instantly spawning in. Those are our riser spawners. Of course I got a nuke. But here we go, we have zombies coming to our window and these zombies are going to our traversal and then hopping over. Next, let's come over to our debris. If we were to fly through a no clip, we would die without God mode because this zone is not activated yet. However, our zone is active. And if I were to kill this zombie and stand in this new zone, zombies should spawn here. And here we go. We got some zombie spawning in our green zone. And now if we were to open up this debris, we will see zombies spawning here soon. And there we go. And of course, we can open up this debris. And now all of our zones are linked and all of our areas are fully playable. And that's pretty much it for zones and spawners. All right, that's going to be it for this tutorial. If you found anything useful and I was able to help you today, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to be notified of all future videos and live streams. Thanks for watching and have a good one.